Welcome to A Moment of Zen. Time to sit back and relax as model, actress, mentor, and supermom Zen Sams takes you on a sexy and wild ride covering the latest in film, fashion, pop culture, cryptocurrency, fintech, cannabis, and entertainment from the millennial mom's perspective. Here's your host, Zen Sams. Hello, my beautiful tri-state area. Welcome to our 127th episode that's over three years on the air and going very strong. It's always such a pleasure to spend my time with you on the airwaves. Thank you for listening and interacting with me on social media. Guys, that truly does make it all worthwhile. Please make sure to follow me at Zen Sams. That's Zen with an X, not a Z. And also remember that we're live on Traverse TV Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern. And of course, all episodes of A Moment of Zen are streaming 24-7 on Kathy Ireland's Your Home TV platform. You can always find us on our YouTube channel, of course. We have such a great show lined up for you today. A big shout out to our newest sponsors, Once Upon a Coconut and CO2Lift.com. Very exciting stuff in our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. We're featuring philanthropist and social media influencer Charlie Rocket, founder of DreamMachineUSA.org and the Dream Factory Hub in Los Angeles, California. He's here today to chat charity, giving back, making one million dreams come true, and why he has teamed up with Once Upon a Coconut and is urging everyone to drink the legend. In our culinary and wine segment brought to you by Vichy Cucina, we're featuring celebrity chef Darian Bryan, one of Western New York's hottest chefs and founder of the Plating Society. You may, you may have seen Chef Darian on the Food Network's Chopped. He's a Jamaican chef who truly brought the heat to Buffalo, New York. He is joined by VIP Peter G of NYC. Peter Guimatis is managing partner at Beach A Cucina Restaurant Group, founder of Tipsy Girl Wines and owner of Beach A Cucina Restaurant right here in Midtown Manhattan. Today we're chatting from Buffalo to New York City, kitchen and recipe hacks that will make your life easier, global flavors and easy meal prep. In our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2Lift.com, we're featuring Dr. Sarah Reardon, a board-certified pelvic floor physical therapist with over 16 years of experience. She is the founder of The Vagina Whisper, an online platform with pelvic floor and core exercise programs. Today, we're chatting female empowerment, dismantling taboos, and demystifying sexual shame. Stay tuned for the amazing Charlie Rocket chatting all about how he's going to make one million dreams come true. Remember, I'll be in Orlando next Friday, September 15th at the biggest celebrity charity conference sponsored by Once Upon a Coconut. Do join me. All you need to do is buy one case of coconut water to get your free tickets. It's an all day event, 9 to 5 a.m., filled with performances and speaking engagements. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, 100% pure coconut water. Imagine a drink that's nutrient-rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it'll become your new favorite beverage. Enter Once Upon a Coconut, the absolute best-tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, we're featuring Charlie Rocket. Now, Charlie was managing one of the biggest music management companies in the world when he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Facing death and weighing in over 300 pounds, he made the choice to return to his childhood dream of being an athlete. He ended up losing 125 pounds, running five marathons, competing in an Ironman, and best of all, reversing his brain tumor. To top it off, he was even featured in Nike's biggest Super Bowl commercial of all time called Dream Crazy, if you guys recall the Colin Kaepernick commercial. Now, at the heart of his organization lies the power of giving back and helping others. Dream Machine has set an audacious goal to make one million dreams come true. Now, this isn't just about granting wishes. It's about fostering hope, igniting possibilities, and creating positive change in the lives of countless individuals. Charlie leverages social media to fundraise, educate, inspire, and bless total strangers and families in need along his journey. 
Now, researchers have found that people who perform a random act of kindness tend to underestimate just how much the recipient will appreciate it. And believing this miscalculation could hold many of us back from doing nice things for others more often. In fact, these miscalibrated expectations matter for behavior. Not knowing one's positive impact can stand in the way of people engaging in these sorts of acts of kindness in daily life. People tend to think that what they're giving up is too little or relatively inconsequential. Yet on the flip side, studies show that the recipients consider the gesture to be significantly more meaningful. So no small act goes unnoticed. It will help your own heart, maybe even more than the recipients. Here to chat. Charity, giving back and making a million dreams come true is the incredible Charlie Rocket. Welcome to the show, superstar. What's up, what's up, what's up? I am so glad that we have reconnected. I We know each other from social media, and I'm glad that once upon a coconut has finally united us and that we are featuring you in our hyd hydration with heart segment. So you have raised a great deal of money since you started on this journey. You have made tons of dreams come true. What was the motivation behind Dream Machine? Uh, what is your roadmap? And talk to me also about recently opening up Dream Factory in LA. So the motivation behind this movement was, I mean, really my rock bottom moment when I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and I was like just looking at the end of my life, I just said to God, I was like, if you get me out of this, I will dedicate my life to helping other people. Um, Cause there was nothing I wanted more like than just to like experience my dream. Um, it's so sad to think humans will go their life and keep their dreams buried. And it's, it happens to so many of us and it's really hard to chase dreams. Um, it's hard for people who are privileged to chase dreams. It's, so just imagine somebody who's underprivileged or has a disability or has an illness. So when I got out of my dark place, I started this mission. I got in my bus, I sold my houses, and I just toured across the country. And I just started making dreams come true one by one, and it has turned into a movement. And we're just trying to really like bring millions of people along on the journey so they can make dreams come true with us. Um, it's been fun. It's been exciting. We've been able to do some crazy things. It's been an amazing journey, but we're just getting started. And uh, that's what brings us here today. You know, we're spreading some kindness and trying to inspire more people to think about their dreams, but also think about other people's dreams as well. It's so important to give back. You're right. And I know congratulations on Dream Factory. I know that that was probably no easy feat. And I'm going to circle back to that in just a bit and talk to you about, you know, the challenges of getting that up and running. But I know that you recently teamed up with Once Upon a Coconut Beverage brand. So first of all, what do you think about the taste? Well, I first found out about Once Upon a Coconut because the guy who founded this, John Chiarondo, it's actually the biggest donor for our foundation. And he's the reason why we've been able to grow this movement the way we have. And when, when she started the coconut water company, I mean, it blew our minds. Like I'm talking about like, we just tasted our brains explode. And we partnered up and I was like, Chi, like this can be how we are able to make so much more impact in the world because Chi is a very philanthropic person. Once Upon a Coconut is based- Chi being John, Chi being John, for those yeah. of you that are confused about that that name. So John Chi. Um, and so this collaboration is extremely important to you. Tell me why. Because, I mean, the best way to help people is through business. Business that can make money can offload money to be able to change lives. Impact-driven companies are how you affect more lives. And uh, John Chiarondo, he's an example of that. Ray is an example of that. And I think that this is how we're going to be able to impact the millions. So it's a good product. It helps people. And um, we are creating the most impact-driven beverage brand in the world. I love it. And it's one thing to introduce a premium coconut water that tastes better than absolutely anything I've ever tried before in the space, but it's truly something else to give back to the communities and people that truly need it. And that's why for every case of Once Upon a Coconut sold, they donate 10% to a different charity monthly, in addition to everything that John has done uh, for your organization as well. Now, creating a successful nonprofit requires dedication, strategy, and a lot of effective collaboration. Can you shed light on the teamwork and partnerships outside of our beloved Once Upon a Coconut brand that drive dream machine forward yes our donors like 
people see what we do online and like we get hundreds of millions of views every month um like we just did a dream for example for a little blind kid named grayson he had a lemonade stand and over the course of a week and a half we were able to get his business built we were able to raise twenty five thousand dollars for him and you know like travis barker showed up to his lemonade stand and supported his business and things like that you know uh we spread like we just try to create light in this world and then that brings in donors who are like we want to see this mission continue so i'm always mission first um it's like if we help people there's going to be people who want to come along and join us in that mission so um i'm very grateful for every donor every company who stepped up but i mean honestly like it's 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 just it's it's really hard running a foundation but then there's angels like john chiarondo who step up and you know kind of lift us up a little bit oh powerful words there huge shush. big shout out to john now the power of giving back can truly you know be transformative you witness it firsthand do you believe that fulfilling dreams and helping others can create a ripple effect of positive change in society absolutely absolutely especially with the power of like social media um you change a life you put somebody in a better place like let's say for example um a, a kid we helped his name was matthew he had cerebral palsy he wanted to have a clothing line we helped him build his clothing line he did four hundred fifty thousand in sales in a week Wow. And that didn't just affect him. It affected his family. It affected, you know, all the people that he's now working with or able to even employ and all the lives that he's able to affect. And the world's just a different place when you change a life. Like, even if you just changed one life, like we have a goal of changing a million, but you change one life, you've changed the world because the, asp the view from that person, the world is different in their eyes. So you change the world. Um, sometimes small things are more powerful than big things. I know I'm throwing around big numbers and, you know, big stuff, but it's sometimes the smallest thing. Cause when I was first diagnosed with a brain tumor, I was in high school and I was very depressed and I didn't leave my house for months. And the basketball team walked across the street and just came to my house and said, Charlie, come to basketball practice. It was the simplest thing. It wasn't $450,000. It wasn't a million or anything. It wasn't nothing. It was just somebody cared. And so that changed my life. So you don't have to do big things to change lives. And we're, we have an event coming up on November 3rd called the best day ever with Kasasa. And we're going to do a hundred thousand random acts of kindness in a day. We're going to have 500 meetup locations all over the country where our followers and everybody can go and we're throwing a nationwide um random act of kindness party of you are such an angel charlie my goodness you really um you really are not only a person of your word but just such a humble and gracious individual i mean it really does take a special kind of soul to be able to do what you do and clearly you are meant to to be here for a very long time. Now, making one million dreams come true is an ambitious goal, like you just said. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered along the way? And how do you really overcome those challenges and keep the mission alive and thriving? The biggest challenge is, I would say, my health. You give a lot and you don't fill up your cup. And when you dedicate your life to helping other people, you forget about yourself so i'm entering into a chapter in my life where i'm like i like i gotta figure this out because i never want to stop helping people so i gotta make sure i'm helping myself as well and um, i'm just focused every day on on mastering the art of living an impactful and successful and healthy life all at the same time so it's like i, I i'm really excited about that um, and I'm motivated to figure it out. You're doing a great job, though. Now, the concept of dreams goes beyond just material wishes. How does Dream Machine cater to a diverse range of aspirations from either personal experiences to community projects? And how do you really go about selecting uh, the people that you help? 
<laughs> the dreams lead the way. So we don't know who we're going to help, but when we dive into communities and I find a 99 year old ladies whose house washed away in the hurricane, it's like, okay, let's, let's help. Like let's fundraise for her and let's get her, you know, $20,000 so she can, you know, afford a place to live. Um, there might be a little girl with a, a rare disease that wants to be a baker. It's like, okay, we need to build her a bakery. You know, let's build her a bakery business. And then a week later, she does 500,000 in sales and 500, I mean, 5,000 people showed up to her event. Or it could be some somebody just simply needs to afford um, cancer treatment. So we launch an online fundraiser and we raise 50,000. So the dreams lead the way. We don't know who we're going to meet. We dive deep into the communities and we're always looking for somebody who needs a miracle. And then me and the dream team, we come in and we, we just do the best we can. We try. That's our, that's our uh, number one goal is uh, let's just try for other people and let's try to get our audience involved as well. And um, that's why it's so important to like team up with companies that care about giving like Once Upon a Coconut because that provides so many more resources. I love Once Upon a Coconut. I, I really, truly love this brand, not only as a mom, but uh, as somebody who, you know, works out and likes to stay hydrated. And even my daughter loves it. Everybody loves it. But the charity aspect of this company and uh, and the founders, John, Mark, Ray, Allen, uh, are really, really put their heart and soul into this, uh, into everything that they do. And bringing on collaborators like yourself is truly key because now you have the ability to truly change lives through the power of, like you said, a business. Now, one might argue that a single organization cannot make a significant dent in the world's challenges. How, how would you respond to those skeptics? And what advice do you have for those that want to initiate positive change, but on a smaller scale? I, I honestly have never received any skepticism um, as long as I've been doing this for five years. Um, it's just so much love. Like, um, you change a life, you change 10, we're at 1500 lives changed. Um, and we're just getting started. I'm going to do this till the day I die. Like, I'm not going to do anything else. Like, this is it. Um, so, so it's like, if somebody is skeptical, then they're just wasting their energy on not helping people. Like just, you know, it's, there's people who light other people's candles and then there's people who blow out other people's candles. It's like you just got to decide who you want to be. You are so inspirational. And with that, we are out of time. What a captivating, um, you know, interview. It's ex this was an exploration of compassion, of determination, and really the incredible potential that really lays within every act of giving. So thank you so much for coming on. You are quite quite the humblest soul. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Absolutely. Don't move a muscle, okay? Guys, take part in the giving philosophy and impact of Dream Machine by heading to dreammachineusa.org. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. You could head directly on the gram at Charlie or at Dream Machine and definitely head to at Once Upon a Coconut. Now imagine a drink that's nutrient rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that, that it's going to become your new favorite beverage. I promise. You definitely have to check them out. Head directly to onceuponacoconut.com. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2 Lift lift.com. 
Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up in just a few minutes in our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, we're featuring Dr. Sarah Reardon, a board-certified pelvic floor physical therapist with over 16 years of experience helping women with pelvic floor issues, particularly bowel and bladder issues, painful intercourse, pregnancy, postpartum recovery, and staying dry and pain-free in the later years of life. She's the founder of The Vagina Whisper, an online platform with pelvic floor and core exercise programs. Sarah is passionate about bringing vaginas into the spotlight to normalize conversations around sexual health. Today, she's here to help me demystify sexual shame, chat women's health, and vaginal rejuvenation. Now, in a world where open conversations about sexuality and women's well-being are crucial, now more than ever, it's my aim to shed light on these often overlooked areas. I'm hoping to help break down the barriers that surround sexual shame and explore the nuances of women's health. By addressing these topics with sensitivity and knowledge, I hope to empower my sisters, challenge societal norms, and foster a deeper understanding of the importance of holistic well-being. Chatting female empowerment, dismantling taboos, and demystifying sexual shame is the incredible Dr. Sarah Reardon. Welcome to the show, Stunner. Thank you, Zen. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so let's dive right in. So we might not all want to admit it, but most of us have a preferred word for vagina, Um, be it fanny, muff, minge, cooch, you know, I'm all for that. But I'm also for those who prefer to solely use the correct anatomical term. But vagina nicknames are in fact here to stay. And a lot of them are quite funny. And life is just boring when it's not spent having a bit of laugh over terms like Lady Garden, right? So, Dr. Reardon, you go, you go by the handle the Vagina Whisperer. That's quite clever. What are the top names that you have heard women refer to the vaginas? You just named so many of them. But I mean, I've heard everything from Cookie and Coochie and Nani. And, you know, the list just goes on. I think what we're really trying to do here is I think it's great to have fun and have names for these parts of our bodies. But we also want people to kind of be able to identify parts of their body. What is the vagina? What is the vulva? And then we can educate future generations about these body parts instead of just calling them kind of fun pet names. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because it's there's all there's almost like a shame in, in just saying vagina, right? I, I remember when my daughter was just learning how to speak and we were identifying her body parts, my mother-in-law and my mom were giving her like code names or pet names. And I was like, no, it's vagina. Correct. Like, it's vagina. That's it what it is. And and there's no shame in calling it my vagina. Right. And and I still say that to this day, right? So finally, we're at the beginning of, of redressing the wrongs and misinformations around this neglected organ. And it starts with, you know, educating our little girls. Now, why do you think there's a shame and embarrassment in the word sex and vagina? Do you think it's cultural? Do you think it's generational? I think both. I mean, if, if we look back at kind of the messaging we've gotten growing up, and I think the older generations got, it was your vagina smells, use this scented soap, use this wash to clean it. Oh, you leak urine, use these pads to hide it. And it's normal, but don't talk about it. And the messaging has often been leaks are part of being a lady. Painful sex during menopause is normal, or this is your new body after a mom, just deal with it. And it's been very much kind of brushed under the rug instead of really brought to the forefront and said, hey, these are things that we're dealing with they're just body parts like every other part of our body, but we also want help for them. We don't want to have to hide them, shame them, you know, cover their scents, cover their smells, cover the leaks kind of thing. You are so right. I just, I I had this very conversation uh, with Dr. Um, Amir, who trends by uh, NYC Gyno. And I just, I remember saying in the interview, there's a study, a 2022 study by gynecologists at the University of Manchester in England, and less than 10% of women were able to accurately label female genitalia. The clitoris is even more taboo than the vagina and arguably the most neglected human organ by medicine. I mean, it's still inadequately depicted in most medical textbooks and barely touched upon in medical training. And, And this is a serious problem. I mean, women have been injured by this lack of knowledge through botched reconstruction surgeries, anti-incontinence procedures, obstetric tears and repairs and vulvectomies. And so 
we have to start talking about this. Pages like yours, profiles like yours that women stumble on on social media that are so educational are so critical now more than ever because you're speaking directly to women who need to hear this because even their own gynecologists are not saying this stuff. So thank you so much for having a great informational page. Now, how do you feel about vaginal rejuvenation and and non-invasive procedures? Is it something we should be practicing? I think that everything has its place. It's, you know, I think of it more of a cosmetic, sometimes um, plastic surgery kind of space where, you know, there are parts of our body that people are very sensitive or self-conscious about. So say you have enlarged labia. Well, that can be something that visually is not appealing for you, but also it can cause irritation and rubbing in your underwear or difficulty wearing certain types of clothing. So there are kind of very real reasons that people want to have these. And it's, I always say that we want to offer people options. So for some people with respect to, you know, vaginal rejuvenation, if they're going to it for um, a tighter vagina or even urinary leakage, I give them options. You can try exercises, you can try stimulators, you can try, you know, procedures and surgeries or vibrating chairs or whatever it may be. But I think we want to give people options, the pros and cons, and then just really inform them of if you have this procedure done, you may need to have it repeated. It doesn't just kind of last your lifetime. So, um, you know, I think that there, it's just more information. I think people are often presented with, hey, this is your only option and this is the direction you need to go when there's actually a lot of options. I also really want to help women know that this is not an area of our body to be ashamed about. I always say, people are like, how do you work with vaginas all day? I'm like, it's like working with an ankle, right? Like it's a part of the body. If something's wrong with it, we want to fix it. So we just want to give them, you know, kind of minimize shame, really maximize acceptance and let them know that you're not alone. You're, yeah, you, I love the humor in that, but you're right. It's like, to your point, it's as simple as that. And, and sex in general, you know, is viewed as, as taboo and, you know, something that we should talk very quietly about. I mean, the act of sex alone can help strengthen your pelvic floor. It's everything you talk about. A strengthened pelvic floor can, you know, have offer benefits, less pain during sex, reduced chance of vaginal prolapse. I mean, women who continue to be sexually active after menopause, I was just saying this, telling my mom this, are less likely to have significant vaginal atrophy, you know, what we call the thinning of the vaginal walls. And and that can cause pain during sex and, and urinary symptoms. So, we must continue having sex. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that's one of the things is that if you have pain with sex, you don't want to have sex, right? We have enough reasons to not want to have sex. We're tired, we're exhausted, you've got kids in the bed. But I think that we want to say, hey, if you are having pain, what are the reasons for that? And what can help? Is it hormonal therapy, exercises, you know, a perineal tear, um, dryness, things like that, and really help women understand their bodies better and also the medical system. I think, again, we've often, you know, just said, oh, this is a normal part of postpartum life or menopausal life, Um, deal with it. But that is not the case. There are so many options out there. And again, we want people to feel good in their bodies and experience pleasure and joy. And it's sex is a great way to do that. But if it's painful, it's something that we're not going to want to do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So you got to fix the root. Now, I mean, the root of the problem of the pain. And what solutions are you recommending for vaginal dryness and discomfort and, and even even something as simple as how do you pick the right lube? Right. Uh, well, there's so many things to think about when we think about dryness and, and lubrication, and I'll break them down into two pieces. So for vaginal dryness, I really say, you know, this is a part of our body, just like our, our skin. We put so much care into our skincare routines for our face. We want to think about our skincare routine for our vulva. So you want to make sure that you're staying hydrated and drinking plenty of water, Avoid any products that are irritating, have chemicals that cause burning, stinging. I always say if it sparkles, glitters, or glows, or has a scent, don't put it on your vulva. You need all natural products down there. Um, You don't want to be washing with any harsh soaps. And then you also want to use a vaginal moisturizer at night if you have dryness. So something as simple as coconut oil. There's another product called V-Magic that's olive oil-based. So those are great for daily moisture. On the flip side, when it comes to lubricants, tons of options. My favorite is a water-soluble lubricant. Um, it's, you know, dries with the tissue so it doesn't hang out and linger and harbor bacteria, but you may have to reapply it during intercourse. You can also use silicone lubricants, but those can't be used with silicone toys. So if you're using a toy that's silicone, you have to use a different type of lube. Or you can use an oil-based lubricant. Again, something as simple as coconut oil, but you can't use oil-based lubricants with latex condoms because it will break down the latex. 
So lots of options. Um, I just recommend urinating after sex to avoid any bacteria in the urinary tract and also just cleansing the area with warm water afterwards to kind of rinse any of the lubes or um, kind of chemicals away. Great information there. Very, very well said. Um, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but I had had uh, radioactive iodine treatment done for Graves' disease and uh, the radiation caused a lot of dryness and down there. So I actually discovered this product, CO2 Lift V, and, and it lifts, it hydrates, it rejuvenates, and it was like easy. It was three applications and then I just did maintenance. Um, I mean, it really helped tighten and lift it off for me, uh, and, I, and I know that there's testimonials out there for other women, and it basically uses carbon dioxide. Um, it's so, so simple. It enhances the circulation by basically rush, rushing oxygen-rich blood to tissue and regenerates cells to improve, obviously, sensitivity and lubrication. It, it was phenomenal. It worked for me. Uh, so that's something that I recommend, and it's easy. It's non-invasive. You could do it at home, uh, but it took a lot of, uh, I mean, I had to go through hundred different products to find something that really worked. Uh, and then I found, I found your page and your page is completely top to bottom filled with so much information. She's uh, her handle is at the dot vagina dot whisper. now this subject uh, for, 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 you know, this is subjective for everyone, but is there a recommended frequency for women to be having sex and or masturbating? So I am a fan of cell stimulation. I think that you don't always have to have a partner to be able to be sexually active. <laughs> and I also think that you want to explore with your own body. If you don't know what pleasures you, how can you communicate that with somebody else? So I, I recommend it. I think that um, there's lots of different ways that we can do that, but kind of get to know yourself, your body, and then you may feel more comfortable when there's another partner or two in the room. Um, with respect to recommended frequency of intercourse, it totally varies. There is such a wide range. There's a really wonderful book called Come As You Are, and that book really talks about that there's a spectrum. For some people, it may be every day to three times a week to have sexual activity. For others, it may be three times a month. So there is just a spectrum, but going with what your normal is um, is really important. And also kind of identifying what are the factors as to why you don't want to have sex. Is it what are the things that are putting your foot on the brake? Is it pain? Is it dryness? Is it body confidence? Is it fatigue, exhaustion, um, a disconnect with your partner? And then taking your foot off the brake in some of those aspects, but what puts your foot on the gas? Pleasure, lubrication, timing, um, you know, different things like that, um, foreplay. So kind of identifying what are those two factors for you that can help you put your foot on the gas, but also help take your foot off the brake. And that's different for everyone. All right, there you go. So rest assured, ladies, that if you're not having sex three times a day, you are normal. <laughs> I, would say, I would say three times a day is on the high end. Uh, I would say no. once to three times a week is like a more normal. Oh, I was teasing that because if it was up to the guys, I mean, they wake up. And they go to bed and, and no real problem. Let's right. go. And, and we're on a clock with the kids. I mean, I put everything, I put sex on the calendar. If, if I don't, you're not getting it. Now, people in romantic relationships for a fact uh, who had frequent sex one to two times a week had more immunoglobin A in their saliva and people who had infrequent sex less than once a week had significantly less IgA. Now, IgA is the antibody that plays a role in preventing illnesses and is the first line of defense against the human papillomavirus or otherwise known as HPV, which is a fun fact. I love to throw that out there. So interesting fact, if you want to keep going, this is one reason. Now, Dr. Reardon, what demographic of women typically seek your services and what is the median age of your, pa of your patients? You know, I would say everything from, I start seeing young women in my clinic at the age of 16 to 18 and then up into their 80s. I mean, you can have pelvic floor issues all across your lifespan from the first time you try to insert a tampon or have a pelvic exam and it's painful. Your first attempt at sexual intercourse and it's painful. It's a huge myth that sex should be painful the first time or even after giving birth and that is not the case. So if you do have pain with sex, I highly recommend kind of seeking some pelvic floor therapy or resources for that. And then in the later years of life, again, it can be painful sex with menopause, urinary leakage, bladder issues, prolapse, but especially kind of in the pregnancy postpartum space, we see the majority of our clients um, between the ages of 25 to 45. And this is also a generation that we're saying, we wanna change the narrative about our vaginas. We don't wanna end up in diapers. We don't wanna end up sexless. Like what can we do now to better take care of our bodies? You are and so right. So they're, they're coming to us and saying, 
feeling like I either want to be proactive or I've been dealing with these issues and I don't want to deal with them anymore. And so that's, I would say, the bulk of the, the folks that we see. Yeah, so it's great because you're you're catering to a necessity. You're catering to a generation wanting to change this approach, which I love. Now, um, we have probably 45 seconds left, but how important is intimacy in a relationship? You know, I think intimacy um, is really important. And I think it's not just sexual intimacy. It can be everything from holding hands to physical touch to verbal communication. When it comes to sexual intimacy, I think oftentimes we need to have those other pieces in place to get to that sexual intimacy part. And to what you were mentioning before, when we have orgasms, when we have sex, we release oxytocin in our brains. And that is a feel good hormone and chemical. So the more that we're able to do that, the better we can feel about our bodies, about ourselves, and even about our partners and relationships. So uh, there are a lot of obstacles in the way. Again, we don't want pelvic floor health to be one of them, but I hope that these conversations can continue to help us optimize our sexual health. Yeah, you said it. You're right on. And this oxytocin, or it's also called the love or int- intimacy hormone, to your point, um, in combination with the endorphins during an orgasm, the combination of these hormones can act as a sedation. So it's going to help you sleep better. Um, and it's a headache relief, too. Another study showed that sexual activity can provide full or partial relief from migraines and cluster headaches. And if people who were sexually active during their attacks, 60% reported an improvement during a migraine and 91% reported uh, moderate to complete relief in cluster headaches, which is interesting because I, I typically do suffer from migraines. Um, so it gives me all the more, more reason to you know want to cuddle up. But we are out of time officially, officially. Thank you so much for, for being so transparent and so full of information. You are amazing. You're truly the vagina whisperer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Zen. <laughs> Oh, no, that was incredible. Guys, you definitely have to check her out. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2Lift.com. And that was the Vagina Whisper. You can head directly to her website, thevaginawhisper.com. There's free pelvic floor guides. You can go directly to the website and forward slash free downloads, or you can head directly on the gram at the.vagina.whisper. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is brought to you by Neve, a members only travel portal exclusively available through Organo, offering members steep discounts on nightly or weekly hotel stays, cruises, auto rentals, excursions, and so much more. With its travel getaway portal, Nave makes the days of surfing multiple travel sites and spending hours evaluating the best deals done with. That's because with Nave, you are guaranteed the best prices. Plus, to gain access to an even more expansive collection of condos, hotels, cruises, vacation villas, fantasy getaways, and concierge service, there's Forever Weeks. Simply purchase a Nave Forever Weeks package one time and enjoy the benefits many times. With Forever Weeks, forever means forever. Not only does Nave guarantee you the best prices, but it is also one of the few travel portals that pays a referral bonus, in addition to you earning rewards points, which can be redeemed on the Travel Getaway Portal for further discounted hotel room rates. Become a member today and navigate the world of travel. Nave, the world for you to experience. For more information, go to nave.travel. That's nave, N-A-V-E dot travel. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up in just a few minutes, we have our culinary and wine segment brought to you by Biche Cucina. Today, we're featuring celebrity chef Darian Bryan, one of Western New York's hottest chefs and founder of The Plating Society. You may have seen Chef Darian on Food Network's Chopped. He's truly a Jamaican who brought the heat to Buffalo, no pun intended. He's known for his private dinners and meal prep for Buffalo's favorite NFL players. He specializes in everything extra, from his signature fedora hats and chef jacket styles to his colossal surf and turf. He believes that chefs are rock stars and should be celebrated as such. Their food makes people happy, and according to Chef Darian, they should feel and see that love too. He loves to merge Caribbean cuisine with fine dining dishes, hence his nickname, the Fancy Jerk. Darian is the personal chef for Buffalo Bills stars like Stefan Diggs, and he's even gone viral multiple times for the wild meals he prepares before game day. Today, he's joined by VIP Peter Guimatis of New York City. Peter's managing partner at Biche Cucina Restaurant Group, 
founder of Tipsy Girl Wines and owner of Biche Cucina Restaurant right here in Midtown Manhattan. Quite the celebrity himself. In fact, Biche Cucina is always swarming with famous people, from Mark and Donnie Wahlberg to 50 Cent, from Rod Stewart to Bruce Springsteen to all the housewives of New York, of course. They all head to Peter's for a fun night out. Today we're chatting from Buffalo to New York, kitchen and recipe hacks that, that are going to make your life easy. Now, according to a new customer curiosity study, produce marketers, suppliers, and retailers should know that the overwhelming majority of trend-setting food consumers are most interested in discovering recipes that can be prepped in less than 30 minutes. And it's not just quick and easy meals they crave. Global flavors are driving the next food trends. So how will today's consumers' curiosities influence tomorrow's food trends? Let's find out. Welcoming now to the show is the amazing chef Darian Bryan and VIP Peter Guimadis. Welcome, superstars. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, Chef Darian, let's start with you. So even the trendsetter want uh, they want it symbol the, the, these food these food trendsetters. More than eighty five percent of respondents in a recent survey are very or extremely curious about easy under thirty minute meals, revealing that even early food adopters are looking for inspiration to save time and resources in the kitchen. What are your go to hands on ingredients, condiments, or spices when preparing under thirty minutes? meals so i like to go for like stir fry it's delicious it's fast you can make rice in less than like 10 minutes and it's pretty much whatever i have in the fridge i got some eggs i got some beans everything is going in it my kids love it my wife love it so it's quick and easy and you can make it healthy too peter what are your what's your favorite you know uh go to under 30 minute meal or is there a spice or, or ingredients that you typically keep handy well, you know, everybody always thinks I cook Italian at home, but I stay away from Italian food because I have it every day. Um, you know, with my Portuguese background, we have a really great dish, which is called uh, it's chickpeas with boiled potatoes, eggs, caramelized onions, um, black pitted olives. And you could have a vegetarian style or you can add uh, codfish to it and you can create all this under 30 minutes. My daughter loves it. It's a real well-known Portuguese dish. It's very easy to make at home and it's kind of like idiot proof right idiot -proof, now, yeah it. yeah um now it's it's interesting because you know as a mom i always keep certain condiments in my in my you know in my kitchen that i could grab very quickly like certain chicken stocks and beef stocks and flavorings what are your go-to um, condiments that you like to reach out to really quickly to spice up meals all right well you know since i have a restaurant i have one of the biggest kitchens in midtown so at home, I don't really carry a lot of stuff except Red Bull and wine. But what I do always carry in my fridge is eggs uh, because, you know, you can do a lot with eggs. It has a lot of protein. I work out a lot, so I like to come home from the gym and have eggs. Um, I always keep some rice around because Portuguese people, we do a lot of uh, with rice. Um, avocado is a must. There's always got to be avocado in the house. You can make a quick spread. You can add onions to it. You can add tomatoes. Um, so I, I don't keep a lot of ingredients in the home. No, those are great. What about you, Chef Darren? So for me, I always got yogurts, bananas, eggs, like hard boiled eggs, just boil them at a time so I can just undergo or just whip one out very quick. Peanut butter is really good too. Lots of fruits because the kid, my kids are five and four. So in the mornings, they, they don't have time to wait for any big breakfast. So eggs fast to whip up, bananas, fruits, yogurt, it's just um, a nice go-to on the fly. I love it. Now, what, uh, Chef Darian, you have little kids. What safe, practical kitchen tips are you recommending that parents uh, set up younger children with for back to school? Any easy ideas they can make safely? I mean, your kids are a little bit younger, but what about that, you know, those tween years, 8 to 12-year-olds, say? Um, my thing is always get the kids in the kitchen, get them familiar with ingredients, fresh and healthy ingredients and just get them involved and i would say lots of like you know beans and nuts grains and you know fruits so that's what i give my kids right now healthy safe and it's nutritious and it's nutritious yeah i always like to keep 
fresh fruit cut up in the fridge for my daughter or at least some bases that she could she's seven years old she's uh, almost eight i she feel like i eat those fruits more than those kids i'm always eating them I, even though i have them for the kids i eat it more too because it's so yeah. easy and it's good for you <laughs> Yeah, anything that they could grab, pre-snacks. Now, Peter, curiosities differ between generations. I mean, Generation Z members are most curious about new cooking skills and techniques, while baby boomers, some of our older crowds, they rank global flavors as their top curiosity. And and time-pressed Gen X, like, you know, we're always on the go, and millennials, many of whom are juggling family and careers, look most toward quick and easy meals. Now, your daughter, Michaela, is... Uh, is now in college. What invaluable cooking skills did you set her up with? And how can you balance simplicity without compromising nutrition? You know what the valuable skills I set her up with? A black MX card. She goes to $300 omakases and drinks wine. <laughs> that's, that's the valuable skills I set her up with. But she really loves food. She's involved in the restaurant. She's actually a pretty good cook. She uh, loves to do uh, guacamole dips. She's always trying to copy our BJ salad dressing, the Caesar one, because she says it's the best. But I don't even give her the ingredients. So she's trying to create her own. But, you know, I make sure she has her salads, make sure that she has her fruits. But she's 18-year-old now, right? So so how is she in the kitchen? Has she picked up cooking skills? Could she make herself a meal from scratch? She can. She does this uh, shrimp dish called uh, shrimp moussambique, which is a spicy shrimp. And she usually cooks like at the beach house. She loves to cook uh, shrimp boost and beak. She loves to do uh, avocado dips. And she loves to actually create her own salad dressing, which is always a hit or miss. I love it. Yeah, that's that's something that my, di my dad, he owned diners growing up, Greek restaurants all through Montreal and even Miami. And I was always in the kitchen. It was It's invaluable to know how to cook. Now, Chef Darian, first, um, when we talk about functional nutrition, uh, a lot of people want to know about this. When it comes to nutrition, while immune support and plant-based foods might be among today's top food trends, some of the people coming into the food chain, like early adopters, are saying that they're most curious in learning about how foods can support cognitive and gut health. So when cooking for your family, you have little ones, what key ingredients do you add to your recipes to make them wholesome, nutri nutritious, flavor-filled, but gut-friendly? Um, I would say ginger because growing up in Jamaica, like we use ginger for everything. You have a bellyache, you're dizzy, put ginger in your food or you can just eat fresh ginger. So ginger and garlic is always my two go-to to give them, you know, better gut health. And vinegar is good too, like apple cider vinegar. My kids, they're, they're funny, they'll eat anything. Whatever we eat, they're eating it too. So that's what I love. They're young. But they're not all about the chicken nuggets and all that stuff. Like whatever we eat, they eat, which I, I love that about them. Oh, that's so important. And now, Peter, um, this question is for you first. So consumers are eager to explore new flavors and simple is the way to go. Mo like close to 80% of early food adopters. And I keep saying early food adopters because it's people who are really starting to get into the food scene, if you will, are very or extremely curious about global flavors and cuisines. So what, Peter, what cuisine do you enjoy cooking the most? And is there a particular global flavor that you can't resist? So I'm a big linguine and clams fan. I try not to have as much of it these days because I'm actually watching my gut. Not the inside, but the outside, how it looks, okay? So anytime I go to a, an, a restaurant and they have linguine and clams on the menu, I always order it because I want to compare it against ours. And I also want to make sure, because everybody says my clams never have any sand in them. So I always <laughs> order it from other restaurants just to see if their clams are better than ours. So that's usually when it's I travel. It's important to I, have clean clams. You have to have clean clams. That goes for everything in life. I agree. Now, Darian, what it, what's the particular global flavor that you can't resist? Don't tell me Jamaican because you cook a lot of that. But I, I want to. I want to. So what, but, what's your what's yours? Um, I would say Asian. Like my kids, they love Asian food. So like, you know, let's go to the Chinese buffets, do this. I just can't resist it. Everywhere I go, I'm like, I'm just going to try Chinese food here. I just, I just love it. I mean, there's something about it. It's because I never really have it in Jamaica too. Is that so new to me? You know what I mean? I'm like, I just eat it every day. And to cook, I would say um, French cuisine. That's like my thing. I love French cuisine. So I just merge my Caribbean background with the French cuisine. I've learned all throughout culinary school and hospitality. So 
Oh, I love it. I love it. I, 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 I envision a collaboration in the future between you and Peter. You could come cook French at Biche Cucina. <laughs> well, we also have our Labar concept that we're starting in uh, Palm Beach. So oh, that, nice. French, I can get some uh, tips from a uh, chef there. And yeah. I like add a little gym yeah. flavor to it. I would love to do that, actually. Uh, I'm your guy. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. Absolutely. And you know, Chef Darian is all about the threads, right? So he has a whole line. I think Peter is going to love this. Um, talk to him about your clothing line. <laughs> so I create my own um, pretty much. I got a guy who create my uh, my suits for me and uh, my uniform, my chef jackets. So these are called my uh, chef's tails. It's like the actual, I'll send you some photos. It's a tail coat with a chef jacket, right? That create all of these because I'm like, I didn't want to be the average chef. And for who I cook for and what I do, I can't just show up in a regular jacket. No, then people are playing make fun of me all the time. Like, that's cheap. I'm like, you know what? I pay almost $2,000 per jacket. I got like 15 of them. So <laughs> I love it. Good for you. I love I'm it. a fashion guy. Love it. There's no reason okay. you can't be fashionable in the kitchen. I like that. Yeah, well, the reason why you're both so successful is because you're both fashionable. You're outside, uh, on the front lines, aesthetically speaking. You're always receiving VIPs and dealing with high, you know, profile social uh, socialites, if you will. So, yeah, people judge a book by its cover in every industry, and everything that glitters is gold to most people. And yep. we are in in a vain, vain world. So, to his point, you got to you got to dress the part. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much, gentlemen. This was quite informative. I always love, love getting, you know, kitchen hacks and ingredients from different perspectives. Peter, you are very, very entertaining. And Chef Darian, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Then Thank we'll see you. you at BJ. I'll have your glass of wine ready for you right around 3.15. I'm, I'm right there. All right. <laughs> Guys, you have to definitely check out Peter Grimatis. Head directly to their website at bichecucina.com. Now, all of this is the coolest, coolest episode. But the most important thing you have to take away is that everything in the kitchen should be calculated. It has to be safe. Don't let your kids come home and turn the ovens on. All the tips that we talked about were, were specifically with adult supervision. And the best and easiest thing to do to get your kids the meals and the ingredients they want, even when you're not home after, after uh, school, is to just prep it and put it in containers and make it accessible for them. That was our culinary and wine segment brought to you by Biche Cucina, celebrity chef and influencer Darian Bryan, Western New York's hottest chef, founder of the Plating Society. That was Peter Guimaras of New York City, Peter's managing partner at Biche Cucina. Cucina Restaurant Group and founder of Tipsy Girl Wines and owner of Beachy Cucina right here in Midtown Manhattan. Head to at Peter G for NYC at BeachyCucinaMidtown.com and at ThePlatingSociety.com. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Your Home TV. Hi, this is Kathy Ireland here on A Moment of Zen brought to you by Your Home TV. We've developed an all-inclusive subscription-free network that you're going to love, whether it's financial freedom, fashion, beauty, health and wellness, wonderful weddings, travel and culture, cooking, entertainment, and short-form documentaries, programming for everyone. Classic films and new shows, including Kathy Ireland Presents American Dreams. We've developed this network just for you. Please check out yourhometv.com. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OGPay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OGPay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Well, that's a wrap, my dear friends. Remember to join me right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio, every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Or you could head to 710wor.iheart.com forward slash a moment of zen. Also, remember that we're, we're live on Traverse TV Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And of course, all episodes of A Moment of Zen are now available on Kathy Ireland's Your Home TV streaming platform. You could head directly to our channel. It's free programming to you. 
browser-based, you could head directly to mox.yourhometv.com. Thank you for listening to A Moment of Zen. It's been an absolute pleasure being your host. Thanks again to all of our sponsors that continue to make this show possible. And remember, happiness is the only thing that multiplies when you share it. Again, a big shout out to our newest sponsors, CO2 Lift and Once Upon a Coconut. We'll see you next week.